too much, now I'm swallowed Now I'm the fool while you're breaking rules Dangerous path that I follow you do and it hurts as I bleed for you cry for you oh, oh. let me bleed as I bleed for you cry for you oh, oh. Welcome along guys, well the day has come, the sun is out, the bike is out, I've just had this mapped by Chris at CGS and she's now putting out 238 brake horsepower at the back wheel. Let's jump aboard and go and see what a 250 horsepower motorcycle is like on the public highway. <laughs> Let's go! So what I've done, riding it here, I've had it in rain mode, so I couldn't sample the power beforehand, I've had it in rain mode, you can see the little umbrella. So let me click it out of rain mode, it is now full power, we've got Kawasaki traction control on level 5 out of 9, so it's mid, midway up the traction control, which also does wheelie control on this bike. You can't turn off the wheelie control separately, I do not want to turn off the wheelie control on a 250 horsepower motorcycle. That is MotoGP levels of power. Whoa! God, it feels, uh, feels lively on the throttle. So before we even start anything, I can't use 250 horsepower on the road. Let's get that out of the way first of all. It is not possible to use 200 and 50 horsepower on the public highway. Certainly not on a YouTube video. <laughs> I do not want to end up in prison. So we can get a feel for what this bike is like now, power delivery wise, but I you know I can't. I'm not gonna be able to unleash the full 250 horses. Oh, listen to that. <laughs> Second gear. Oh, really control. Coming in there in second. Just it didn't even know they go anywhere. There's only about six thousand revs. It's an absolute animal! Warm drive! <laughs> oh my word! The front wheel just lifts as you get into third gear on the power the front wheel just comes up which is crazy. 
crazy speed for the wheel to be coming up just as the power comes in. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it is... Check the camera still on. It is crazy, as I say. Completely OTT for the road. But a lot of fun. It's incredible. It is absolutely insanely the power is just like nothing I've ever felt before no bike I've ever ridden feels like that absolutely you know you just even at, when you're doing silly speed it's still wheels coming up as the power's coming in it's unbelievable absolutely unbelievably fast and that's not even scratch. I mean, I only got to about ten and a half, and, it, and I shut it down. It was crazy. I need a runway. <laughs> if anyone knows anywhere where there's a runway for hire, I want to hit 200 miles an hour. I want to have a GPS confirmed 200 miles an hour. So calm it down a little bit now. You can't do too much of that on the road. Not if you want to keep your license and stay alive. So let me, while we slowed it down, let me talk you through some of the stuff which I've had done. So as I can say, this is a year old now. I've only done an embarrassing 2,386 miles. She's barely even running. You've got to do a thousand miles on these to run them in. So she's only 1,300 miles over her running. The rear, the rear tire was shot. The rear RS10 wore out in 2,300 miles. I killed it off on the dyno, it did have much life left, but it was killed on the dyno. I probably would have got about two and a half thousand miles out of it, but that was with a thousand miles of running it in, a thousand miles of taking it easy. So, I'll be interested to see how long these Michelins last, I will keep you posted. But the bike has been, the bike has been fantastic in those 2,300 miles. Nothing's gone wrong, there's been no recalls. The only things which happened to it is through my own stupidity, like when I dropped the bike and damaged the tank. It's, it's too fast. You need to stretch this bike. I hate to say it, I hate stretch bikes. I hate the look of stretch bikes. You know, a massive stretch swinging arm, I hate it. Really destroys the handling of a bike as well. But with this much power, there's no way you can put it down. You know, it just the wheel comes up, the front end starts skittering around and you know, that, that is a very disconcerting at the, <laughs> the speeds you can reach on this instantly. But it, it's, you know, it's way too much. You can't put that power down. Not with a standard length swinging arm. Wings and everything. I'm not going to keep that front wheel down. Oh, like a train! <laughs> Feather around here. Bananas! It's terrifying. <laughs> it's a serious, serious motorcycle. I wouldn't say it was fun. It is serious. It's not a fun bike. 
this isn't like those beautiful super nakeds. This is now a very serious machine. Would I want this as my only bike? Absolutely not. But this combined with the Hypermotard, a fun bike and a serious bike, that could make a really nice combination actually. I'm going to pull over and just process that. What a beast. Uh, it, uh, I'm, I'm lost for words at the performance of this. It's, in, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, you know, it's way too much for the road. It is way too much for the road. But I was going to say it's a lot of fun, but I don't think it even is a lot of fun. It's terrifyingly fast, but uh, you've got to do it, haven't you? It's incredible. It's an incredible piece of engineering is what it is. And let me talk you through some of the features and stuff I've done to it during the 12 months of ownership. So it's got the full H2R wing set. So instead of the mirrors, it's got these wings. Now these are a proper wing, a proper aerofoil wing. They're not just a scoop, they're a proper wing profile on here. So they create real downforce. So you've got the upper wings. It's also got the H2R lower wing, same thing, proper wing profile. These are all from Moto Composites. Absolutely love the Moto Composite stuff as is the front cow. This is the carbon cow, a copy of the H2R cow, basically. So really now the whole bike is, a, is an H2R replica, I suppose. That's what I've gone for. Make it look like the 330 horsepower H2R track bike. The Van Demon exhaust absolutely looks incredible. I think it saved about 15 kilos compared to the stock system. I've got videos of all this stuff, so I'll link all this, but I think I saved about 15 kilos on the exhaust. Yes, I've still got the Lambda in there. We cut that out when we mapped it. So I need to get the blank for that to get rid of that, but I lost the blank, so I need to get one. So I can take that off. Van Demon make exhaust for other bikes. They do a, a system for the Super Duke, for a lot of Ducatis, for the SX versions of the H2. The, the quality of it, is amazing. I highly, highly recommend you check out Van Dimon Exhaust. Really good. The bike has the H2 carbon tank because I dropped it and damaged the tank. Wheels Motorcycles had this in stock. So very, very thankful I got this because I'm going to be 2,000, two and a half thousand pound. I think a brand new H2 tank is. Moto Composites, carbon fiber infill panels again. I've also got a Sprint filter in this, the top of the range Sprint filter, the one which you don't have to oil, you just blow it out with compressed air. I can't think what the name of it is, I'll put a link to it. It's quite expensive, but it's gonna be the absolute business. Well, one of those is in there, courtesy of Brock's performance. So I must thank Brock for that. I've also got Moto Composites chain guard carbon, you know, it, it, it's, it's bling-a-ding-ding, -ding, this bike. <laughs> Bling-a-ding-a-ding-dong. Look at it. But I think that's about it. As I say, I've got the lithium battery in it as well to save a bit of weight. I don't know how much it weighs. I mean, these are quite heavy bikes. These aren't lightweight. But I think with the exhaust saving, with the, with the lithium battery, with all the titanium I've got on it, the race fastener is titanium. Let me just show you some of that. Titanium caliper bolts titanium pinch bolts you won't be able to see them but i've got titanium yoke bolts as well titanium bolts on the lever perches titanium disc bolts yeah lots of titanium bits basically on it as well just you know, a little extra bit of weight saving oh also i've now got indicators bar end indicators rizoma bar end indicators courtesy of crispy designs he had some of these spare so he gave me a good deal on these so Thanks, Crispy, for the, uh, it, they're brilliant. I really like them. Bar end indicators, that finishes off. The whole bike's finished now, really. The whole bike is finished. Bar end indicators and everything. So there we go. I think I've got my breath back. Let's jump back on, if I dare. The main reason I had it mapped wasn't really to make a 250 horsepower monster. The main reason was to try and sort out the surgy throttle and I'm not sure that has worked. It seems to be, if anything, the whole bike seems to be more aggressive. So I'll have to have a chat with Chris because he said we could come back and we can just 
redo it and look at it a bit more. I mean, what uh, what I'm thinking of doing, what we did discuss, is having a baffle out map. So using the rain mode as a baffle out map. So put another seven percent fuel across the entire fuel map because it was a bit lean with the baffle out to correct the fueling, and then bang it into rain mode, take the baffle out, and then you've got. 250 horsepower at the back wheel if you want to do any sort of closed course top speed run type things so we spoke about that so i may go back and have that done and perhaps just look at the throttle response see if we can do soften it a little bit more maybe at the initial opening that may calm it down a little bit but it's not bad but i think the whole bike feels quite aggressive now i mean <laughs> it's a 250 horsepower bike it's going to feel aggressive it's going to be handful. That's another H2. That is another H2. I recognise the uh, tail lights. <laughs> Let's be saying how exclusive they are. And what do we have here? We have another one. Oh, bugger me. Oh, bugger me backwards. Looks bone stock, that one. It's even got the uh, tail tidy and everything. It's got the big old marrow Akropovich can on it. <laughs> Give him some of that. Maybe what I could do, if I don't go for the, uh, the, the the baffle out map, just have rain mode as like they're going through the town mode. Because it's really easy to engage rain mode on these. You just hold that button down for three seconds and she's now in rain mode with the umbrella. Oh God, what is this road doing? Oh, that's now ray mode which is super super flattened off so you don't have to be ultra precise with your throttle inputs then you can be quite lazy you know so if you're riding it all day you, you haven't got to think oh it's getting too much you know i've got to be ultra careful then when you do f hit a faster bit of road hold it down ray mode gone you don't even have to shut the throttle or anything now you can feel straight away it's been woken up that isn't too bad you know just putting it in rain mode when you're in town it's so easy to put into rain mode by holding that button down three seconds it's no trouble to do that so maybe that would be more useful than having a mental 250 horsepower map which is never probably never going to get used yeah i think that's the thing i think that's a sensible thing to do but this isn't a sensible bike. <laughs> That's what any normal person would do. Well, a normal person wouldn't even own one of these. That's true. There's not one thing sensible about this. Nationals, hold the button down. Crazy mode, it's now a mentalist.